Hey, everybody. So I spent a lot of time talking about misinformation within the AI space on my channel overall. And rarely do I have an instance and a situation where I can point it out and showcase it to you as beautifully as I can in this particular example. So today we're going to examine a few different research papers, but we're going to focus specifically on two uh, is the main goal of this. Uh, so the first research paper that we're going to focus on is called No Free Lunch, Rethinking Internal Feedback for LLM Reasoning. And the whole exercise that I want to go through here is showcase to you that it's possible to uh, outline and to uh, showcase these things in like two different ways like if you're a naysayer you can showcase a paper like this if you are a, like if you just are a hyper then there's another the other research paper that i'm going to show you is going to completely contradict this research paper right and then it's just uh the it's the amount of uh information research and like the like speed of that research that is coming out it's um impossible to uh like keep up with it sometimes overall and then i think that's kind of the the big thing within this and even for someone like me right and then so it's hard to and it's easy to uh just take one particular uh area of research or one particular researcher or one particular research institution and then say, okay, they're, they're, uh, this is the like gospel on this particular topic, right? But uh, when you, uh, let me demonstrate this for you. So this is the first one. This is uh, No Free Lunch, Rethinking Internal Feedback for LLM Reasoning. And it's put out by a, a bunch of institutions. Um, and then essentially, overall, what we're going to talk about is reinforcement learning. And then we're going to talk about the, essentially the three variants, the three big variants of reinforcement learning, which are RLHF, RLVR, and RLIF. RLHF is reinforcement learning with human feedback, the traditional model of reinforcement learning. RLVR is reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards. So think of like um, GRPO where you're getting like you're giving the model prompt and, and f instruction to start, and then that becomes the, the reward signal that the model operates off of. And then the last one, like the kind of the holy grail, is uh, RLIF, which is reinforcement learning from internal feedback, which is like self-learning, right? Uh, you give the model information, and, and then it just self-learns overall. And then so this particular research paper that we're examining here says that uh, if you just rely on this, this reinforcement learning for from internal feedback, and you just rely on the internal feedback mechanism for the model, that uh, essentially uh, thought reasoning falls apart uh, and then it falls apart in a way that is like actually like worse than non fine tuning the model meaning that uh the model like it, it leads to model collapse it's basically kind of the, the bottom line right so and then they go through uh and then they they give uh, a lot of um analysis within this and then a lot of it is just like their experimentation and then what they show is essentially that like what happens within this is that you you get entropy collapse uh, overall that like the model like kind of like just like ends up like uh, vacuuming its own entropy is kind of like the the bottom line that they they prove out within this right and they they prove it out like that's this is is one hundred percent what what happens uh, within this situation right that like eventually like the the model it's like um and people have gone over this in different ways and in different like mathematical concepts right that's it, the model just is like uh feeding off of its own predictions which creates like a um deviation from the gradient and like because it's just like because of pro random probability injection and then so uh like that just gets like further and further away from like the actual truth right and so just and then eventually like you just get collapsed <laughs> and then uh from the physics perspective it's just the model is sucking more and more entropy uh and then eventually enough entropy is depleted and then it leads to collapse and then so 
Uh, there's nothing is wrong within this research paper, right? This research paper is accurate within that. They give uh, everything uh, within how, how all of it works. They describe policy entropy, which is like what leads to like that, uh, the collapse, right? Because the, the model just essentially sucks out all of the policy entropy. Uh, good analysis as to what exactly, uh, how RLIF works, their experiment setups, like this is a good research paper overall, right? Nothing is a flawed within this research paper. And so if you took this and you stood on this research paper, there's like nothing um, flawed within that, right? Uh, and then this is June 20th, 2025. But we come here to this research paper, June 16th, 2025, put out by Microsoft as well as UCLA, titled Direct Reasoning optimization. LLMs can reward and refine their own reasoning for open-ended tasks. Interesting. So, at bottom line, as a uh, what this research paper does and says, like in a simplistic nutshell, is so this research paper agrees with this research paper. They say that they went through these experiments, they uh, put the model, and then they just trained the model based off of internal feedback. This method here, and then like it, it they led, they got model collapse, right? Exactly as as they said here. But then, so what they did from there is that they developed this method that they call an R three reward system, and then they from there. So step one is they develop this R three reward system. Step two is is that they uh, then make the R3 reward. This is the like instead of the like uh, RLIF, it's RLR3F. <laughs> like, uh, and then so they make this R3 reward the uh, internal guiding mechanism, and then it overcomes the the problems uh, that are outlined within this research paper. So again, like nothing is wrong, flawed, or inaccurate with this research. It's just that uh, this is step one, identification of the problem, step two, solving the problem. <laughs> and then, uh, so if you want to be a, like, just stand on the, the naysayer mindset, which it's easy, right? Like, well, here's the problem outlined. And then like this problem, like, you know, this is a big problem, 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 problem. But um, sure, like <laughs> in the world of AI, uh, those problems are, are um, already solved for as basically as soon as they're recognized, right? Uh, it was already solved for before they were able to publish uh, the problem uh, overall. And, and then, so here we are, right? And then within this, just diving it down like uh, more simplistically as to this R3 method and then just giving you like a, a little bit more background uh, into it. It's interesting overall, right? Because so, so what they prove within this R3 method is, is that there are um, certain parameters that are more important overall than other parameters. And then uh, within that, their method is very simplistic in that it allows for um, and it's based off of kind of like how the models actually work, uh, allows for prediction off of like the very next token is really kind of like what the method is. And then so, uh, and it's like prediction, and, but evaluation and reasoning evaluation based off of the very next token. So like that's exactly what the model does, right? The model's predicting the next token. And then so it's just saying, okay, also like do reasoning evaluation off of the next token, which I mean, like, it's not human reasoning, right? And it wouldn't be classified as human reasoning on any level within that, but um, it leads to um, an, a, a reasoning, uh, reward-based reasoning outcome um, in this situation. So it, it, it does the job, right? Like um, if you wanna call it a tomato or tomato, it does the same thing overall. Uh, but essentially, bottom line, they're solving the, uh, big problem within this, right? And the interesting thing to me within this is, and it's a, a kind of a third uh, layer of that like uh, naysayer versus hyper uh, argumentation within this is that, so within this method, uh, they're taking and they're um, 
their solution is very elegant in that it's like you can take any problem and then break it down to like the its most simplistic form for the LLM model in this instance, which is the very next token, right? Like that's kind of like the uh, like base level of reasoning, very simplistically defined for the LLM model is like the very next token, right? Uh, and then a lot of people they they uh, like the Apple paper and like all of that <coughs> that hype is around like if you give the models like huge problems that are very complex the models can't solve for them whereas uh, this is like saying that like every single problem break it down into like the next token so like if if, if it's uh 1000 steps to solve start with the next token if it's uh, a billion steps to solve start with the next token five steps start with the next token and then so it, like uh it allows and it solves for those problems that those people highlight, which like it's easy to point out <laughs> problems within this, right? But to me, it's like um, these problems that we run into, like with the reasoning models, et cetera, it's all like scaling problems, right? And then we've dealt with scaling problems in computers for 70 years now. And then so it's like not a huge thing when, when these problems are identified. Again, we can solve for them like the uh, kind of like as soon as they're identified and, and, and a majority of instances before they're published overall, right, academically, which is like why like I don't think a lot of people are understanding that like the, the research at this point is uh, like outpacing uh, the ability to like uh, publish and, and go through scrutiny um like it, it's just like a, a, like a, a huge amounts of like um you know like um the typical academic process overall because it's just moving too fast uh within that and then so within that <laughs> and then related to that to me i like i like all of this when i read through all of this to me like none of it is new overall because I, like i've been following it's it, my research and as well as there's like a few other researchers uh that have been kind of like focusing in and honing in on on these things overall and then so the first thing i'll show you here is uh kind of like a a um post that I uh from my network on linkedin i'll share i won't share the individual because i haven't talked to them but like they're uh a lot of their research is aligned with my research like we're not like um, associated in any way it's just like very coincidental that our, our research happens to align and then they have um, a big following on on linkedin but so we found something that shouldn't exist the ai field runs on a core belief that intelligence in large language models is evenly distributed across all parameters recent research estimates models store th about 3.6 bits per parameter implying memory spreads layer by layer weight by weight the dominant belief follows intelligence scales linearly but with size but this assumes each parameter contributes equally to learning that's where fisher information becomes critical fisher information measures how sensitive predictions are to perturbations in a single parameter a high fisher parameter isn't storing a bit it's controlling behavior when we analyzed quinn 2.5.5b that belief collapsed 94.3 percent of the total fisher information is concentrated in just three weights not three layers, not three matrices, three individual scalars, all in early and late MLP dot down projection layers. They don't look special, but they behave like computational black holes. They absorb entropy, radiate coherent signals through skip connections, and compress residual loss into semantic attractors. These weights aren't just informative, they're irreducible. Remove one and the model collapses. This aligns with these superweight and large language models which showed that pruning a single superweight can destroy more capability than removing thousands. Black hole dynamics. These weights aren't memorizing or generalizing. They anchor the transformer like singularities in curved space. Heat sink. Absorb gradient energy. Entropy pump. Radiate structured act activation. Gravity well. Network funnels signal into them. Horizon. Cross it. Collapse is irreversible. And then they give kind of the, the mathematics behind it. Intelligence doesn't generalize by diffusion. It condenses gravitationally into a few ultra-stable attractors that encode the network's loss correction code. What this changes, if 94.3% of capability can live in three weights, 
scaling laws break. Compression must focus on thermodynamic structure, not parameter count, and alignment may depend on just a few tr attractors. Memorization versus generalization isn't the right debate anymore. This is computational physics, and it's happening in weight space. And then the kind of just uh, the uh, some pretty pictures here. <laughs> and then related to this, and then so let's let, let let's take that as the base here. And then let's look at uh, and examine it through this research paper here, the last research paper we're going to look at, which is Revisiting the Othello World Model Hypothesis, published on March 6, 2025, by University of Copenhagen. And then so this research paper is uh, interesting to me, and then how it relates to all of this is overall, so, and it it's, this is a concept that I've been talking about for a long time and for a while on this channel, which is that the models operate and they create a, a latent space, meaning that they create like a pocket universe, right? Essentially, uh, within their environment and everything is uh, related to them on their pocket, based off of their pocket universe and how they navigate their pocket universe is via geometry. So geometry is like a core aspect of the, the universe for these models, right? It's very important to them overall. And then so uh, within that, the the models um, literally model and 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 uh, put these things in in into like a a universe structure, right? So think of like concepts like cat, dog, car, uh, moped. A scooter, right? And then they're, they're all scattered around its uh, latent space and those concepts represent its universe and then it navigates them geometrically uh, within that. And what has been proven out more and more is that it's, I mean, literally <laughs> like a pocket universe. So you have the concept of uh, black holes that exist within this pocket universe. And then so like um, there's another algorithm that uh, so like, um, there's a concept that I've talked about quite extensively on this channel, torque clustering and everything surrounding that and all of the algorithms surrounding that and uh, all of the physics surrounding that, right? Those algorithms and that algorithm wouldn't be possible, wouldn't be uh useful, et cetera, if none of this were true, if this kind of like this black hole concept within this uh, latent space of the LLM models uh, weren't true. Um, and then so it, it is. <laughs> and, and then so uh, within that, like we're like, um, there's uh, more research, like I think that's like the, the last undiscovered layer of uh, this overall is like how exactly and how important um, are those like, those few super parameters, like those those black hole parameters that we'll call them within the network. Like what I can tell you, one million percent at this point, and and across like all of this research is, is that like if you take and you find those, we'll call them like the black hole parameters within the model, and it's say the, the three parameters, right? They say it's like an eight billion parameter model, and I take three parameters, and I know exactly which three parameters to zero out. I can collapse that model. But so how much is the opposite true? <laughs> like, okay, like, like those three parameters are, are, are very central to the model, but like, how do we, we buff that? Like, I know like we, at this point, we know how to, to like, you know, cut it, but like, how do we buff it? Um, and then that's kind of where we're at as like, kind of to me, like the last layer of understanding, uh, how these models work at this point, I think like, um, it's been like common like knowledge at this point like, and, and common discussion that like it's uh, not known exactly how these models work internally and that's been like the discussion for years right i think we're starting to finally get to the end of those discussions uh where we actually do have now like a very uh, good understanding overall of the internal workings of these models. It's just, it, it's, um, the internal workings are just not what we expected them to be. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, literally that they're, uh, creating a, and operating essentially within like a pocket universe within their own little, <laughs> little universe overall is, uh, how that breaks down. And then so it's, uh, interesting to me just, uh, looking at these things and examining them overall. But then so going back to the main topic here of discussion <laughs> within these two research papers, uh, which is the, uh, 
way at that um, can, I guess, the first question being, can models uh, actually utilize an internal reward mechanism? This paper proves that they can. Uh, and then uh, second is, is that like, uh, how, what is that reward mechanism, which they showcase and outline here. And then so kind of bottom line again, it's like, depending on how exactly you want to slice this argument, you have plenty of academic research on both ways, right? And both sides of it. Uh, it's just if you want to narrow your scope down or if you're willing to broaden it out uh, to get the kind of fuller picture. And that's kind of what I try to do within these things overall, right? It's like not take like just that narrow scope uh, and then like look at them from the broader, broadest perspective uh, possible within these things. Uh, and then that tends to work out pretty well for me overall within this. And then so uh, overall, if you like this type of content, please like, subscribe. Thank you very much.